Hey guys, JB here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Crossout. Hope you're all doing well. For today's video, I'll be doing something a little bit different than gameplay. I'll be doing a tutorial for all types of raids in Crossout. Now, I did something similar back in the day, but that was just one raid and it was a similar build. Then someone mentioned that my build wasn't legit because I was using a lot of high level stuff and he was right. Back in the day, I was level 12 with all factions so i just strapped on everything i could and made a low bar score build but this time i made sure i used low bar scores or low level stuff now this build that you see in front of me i created with the parts that you get from level four of all the factions so you need to be level four with the lunatics the nomads the scavengers and the steppenwolf now i did mess up a bit because i forgot you got steppenwolf after you've reached level 10 for the scavengers as you can see here you need to get level 10 to get scavengers. The only parts I've used from the Steppenwolves are these three. So if you can replace them with something else, you'll be good again. Just these three parts. Nothing too special. But anyways, I hope this video tutorial slash guide will help you guys out. I will also share this on Reddit. So if you guys uh, give it an upvote, I would really appreciate that. And maybe it can stick around above. So if new people come that need help with raids, new players, you know just share the video for them so they can you know what to do i'll have timestamps on in the description down below for each section of the raid or for each raid so you like chase and stuff like that so you guys can just click on that and just skip to that part of the video because it's kind of long i think it's my longest video these are all going to be hard rates these are not going to be easy or medium rates just all on hard now the only chase now the only raid i can't complete with this build is chase because chase you need crickets wretchers harvesters or goblin shotguns um other than that it's just impossible to complete raid on hard now this is my low bar score raid build it is called jb raid and my regular raid build is also called oh this is called jb easy raid and my regular raid build is called jb raid now this build is good. I can also do chase with this and then just remove guns and get add harvesters in the front. But I use something else to complete chase. I will show you that in the video. Now I think I have had a long enough intro. I don't think I forgot anything. If I did, leave them in the comment section down below. But I don't think I did forget anything. But you know, I'm pretty old. I could be wrong. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Uh, the support is needed. I'm almost at 3k subs. Uh, yeah, I'm done talking. Enjoy the video. Okay, we're gonna start with data theft. Data theft is pretty nice and simple. Once you start off, you see three icons on the map. Uh, one tower where you need to install the equipment and two other points where you need to collect the equipment. The equipment is protected by um, a few bots and a few missile defender turrets. Nothing too difficult. The missile defender turret can be a little bit annoying because they can shoot off your weapons quite easily, but not in one shot in at this bar score at least if you're using uh, this build. The bots are not that difficult, they're just uh, a few shots away from being dead anyways. So once you take out those units protecting the equipment, you can collect it and then bring it back to the tower to install it. Once both pieces of equipment have been installed on the tower you will enter a defense mode where you need to protect the tower keep in mind in the end of this raid you'll have to protect the first tower again so try to keep it in the best condition as you can because that's actually quite important so once the defense of the first tower is triggered you will have to face two waves of enemy bots so nothing too difficult you there will be some uh, melee bots that will grind the tower try to take care of them as quickly as possible so they don't damage the tower too much uh, once the two ways are done, you will have to uh, collect two more pieces of equipment and install them on another tower. It's the same as before, two pieces of equipment we have to collect and they're guarded by some bots and some missile defending turrets. Uh, once you've collected both and returned them to the second tower, you will be entering a defense mode again, but this time you will be facing four ways instead of two. Um, a little bit more difficult, but nothing too hard that you can't handle with this build. Once you've completed the defense of the second tower, quickly return to the first tower because enemy will be spawning there in like 5 seconds and you will start shooting up the tower and grind them. So what I do, I just, just self-destruct because usually your build is pretty banged up at that point. Self-destruct, spawn back near the closest uh, point of the first tower and start defending it. 
Once the defense of the first tower starts for the second time, you will be met with three waves. Two waves with normal bots and the third wave coming with bots and a boss. Once you've destroyed all the units, that's it. Data theft raid completed. Alright, now we're gonna take that gone in two minutes. Once you start this raid, uh, you'll be starting at the beginning of the map. You'll have to drive a little bit and then you'll be greeted by a wave of bots. Um, nothing too special, you can take them out pretty easy. Once you have taken care of those bots, you drive a little bit further and then you will be greeted by another wave of bots and missile defending turrets. Once you've destroyed them, you'll see the truck that you need to defend. Once you rendezvous with the truck, there might be some bots left around. Once you've destroyed all the remaining bots, the truck will start moving and then you'll have to protect them. Now this raid is pretty simple. The truck will move from one point to another and you will have to protect it along the way. That's that said. Um, there's a lot of bots, a lot of waves that will come. You will have to destroy them. Try to destroy the bots with uh, the augers, the melee bots first, because they deal a lot of damage to the truck. Uh, at some point, the truck will stop and then you'll have to defend it against a few bots, just one wave of bots. Once you take care of them, you'll have to collect four items. Once you've collected all four items, you bring them back to the truck and then the truck will start moving again. Uh, the same thing will happen. You, it will move, bots will come, you'll have to protect it. Once the truck has reached its destination, you will be greeted by some bots and a boss. Well, actually a mini boss. It's not that difficult to take out. And that is gone in two minutes. Gone in 2 minutes took me 10 minutes and 44 seconds. I forgot to mention this for the first raid, Data Theft. So I will do that right now. Data Theft took me 8 minutes and 35 seconds. Alright, now we're gonna take a look at Frontier Defense. I believe Frontier Defense is one of the longest raids that we have with Crossout. Not 100% sure on that, but it takes forever to complete it. Uh, Frontier Defense is also pretty simple to explain. And it's quite boring if you ask me. If you have a hard time falling asleep, you can play Frontier Defense and you'll fall asleep right away. But anyways, once you start the raid, you'll have to drive to a tower. It will be defended by a few bots. And there are also four fixed machine gun placements on the map that you can destroy. Once you've destroyed them, you can place your own machine guns there. Uh, you can play. You can upgrade your machine guns that you've placed there uh, three times. Even if an ally has placed a machine gun there, you can upgrade it for him. Um, the first time you place a machine gun, it costs 60 parts. The second upgrade is 100 parts. And the third upgrade, level 3 upgrade, is 160 parts. You'll get parts by killing bots and bosses and stuff like that. I think, I believe you get 20 points for a normal bot, uh, 60 points for a purple bot, and 100 points for the boss. Like I said, this raid is pretty simple to explain. Um, I wasn't able to count the amount of waves you get before a boss there are three big waves which consist of a few smaller waves now i believe it's between five and ten small waves before you get a big boss and then you'll move to the second big wave it's kind of weird to explain but you have to face a boss three times the bosses can be quite annoying because there's a boss with a bunch of drones like 20 drones which take out the tower and any builds pretty pretty quick so try to take out the drones first and then take out the, the, the remaining of the boss build. Now like I mentioned before, this raid is pretty simple. Once you've destroyed all the bots and killed the bosses three times, the raid is over. Personally, I don't like this raid. It's pretty long, but if you really like this raid, uh, I would say go for it. Have fun. Frontier Defense took me 12 minutes and 40 seconds to complete. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at Perimeter Breach. Uh, perimeter Breach objective is pretty simple. You drive to the end of the map, collect the package, and bring back to the beginning where you spawn. But you will meet so many enemies along the way and missile defense turrets. It's quite annoying. Now, Perimeter Breach, back in the day when it first got added, was one of the easiest raids to complete. The lines was fast. It was really simple, but then they made it 10 times harder. So once you start, you only have to drive 2 meters and it will be greeted by 4 waves of enemies. Uh, once you take care of those enemies, there will be the last wave will have 2 enemies that will drop 2 special cargo items. I think it's just explosive, because further along the map you'll have to blow up a door. Once you collect those explosives, you continue to drive a little bit and then you'll be meted by missile defense turrets near the door you need to blow up. 
Once you take care of the turrets, you blow up the door, you'll be greeted by more defense turrets and some bots. You take care of them and then the end is almost near at that point and then you can collect the package. But before that, the package is protected by a few more bots and missile defense turrets. Um, pretty simple, right? Well, yes it is, but it's just so many bots to shoot at. Uh, once you collect the package, you will have to then bring it back to the starting point of the map where you guys spawn. Uh, which is pretty simple, you just drive back, you'll have to face some bots along the way. But once you've reached, or once you're close to the end, or the start starting point, it might look familiar for you guys. Uh, keep your distance, I would say, because it's quite difficult. There's a boss there as well, and there are so many bots that spawn. Can cannon bots, cricket bots, and they're quite annoying, even at this bar score. They can strip you off and destroy your builds really easy. So keep your distance, strip off the rockets and the cannons if you can from a uh, distance. Uh, just take it nice and slow at this point because they can take you out really easy and people usually don't like to bring repair kits so just take it nice and slow and make sure you have repair kits. Once you've destroyed all the bots and the boss, uh, mission complete, just drop the package off in the circle and then you're done. Perimeter breach took 12 minutes and 40 seconds. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the last convoy. The last convoy is really similar to Gone in Two Minutes, but with Gone in Two Minutes, you have to drive through the truck. But in the last convoy, you start with the truck. Um, pretty simple, so this explanation will be really short. It's mostly similar to the other. Um, you start off with the truck, you'll have to defend it. Just shoot everything that attacks the truck. Focus melee builds first. At some point, the truck will stop at a gate. You'll have to collect four items then to blow up the gate. And then you'll have to drive again to defend the truck. The truck will then arrive at its destination. And then you will be greeted by some bots and a boss again. So pretty simple and similar to Gone in 2 minutes, but just with some slight changes and stuff. So that is the last convoy. The last convoy took me 10 minutes and 30 seconds. All right, now we're gonna check out War for Fire. In War for Fire, when you start the raid, you'll have to drive to a tower to capture it. Uh, it is defended by a few bots, and they're pretty simple to take out. Once you've destroyed the bots, you'll have to collect three energy sources to bring back to the tower. Each energy source is, of course, protected by some bots. Now, once all three energy sources are brought back to the tower, the tower will start producing fuel, which need to be brought back to the escape zone. At the escape zone, there's a truck waiting with a circle where you need to drop the fuel. Now, this raid is kind of tricky. Each time the tower produces fuel, there's a wave of bots spawning to destroy the tower, and you will need to defend it against it. But there's also the fuel that needs to be brought back to the truck. So, my advice is, once the fuel is spawned, just wait don't collect the fuel yet, destroy all the bots, then one person can collect the fuel and bring it back to the truck. The uh, enemies at the truck aren't too difficult, one person will be sufficient to take care of them, and you know, that will be that. But once the person that delivers the fuel to the truck takes care of the bots, he can then drive back to the tower and help the fans or bring back some more fuel. Now once the pump has produced fuel for the second time and you guys have defended the pump for the second time, uh, the person collecting the fuel can go to the drop zone and someone else can go with him. Um, there's only one person that should stay at the pump at this point because the third time the pump produces fuel, there's no wave that will destroy the pump because the pump is after that useless because you got the three pieces of fuel. The players that are at the drop zone then can set a perimeter and wait for the last person to bring the fuel because once the last piece of fuel is brought to the drop zone, you will need to defend the truck against more waves. Now once the final piece of fuel is dropped at the truck, it will trigger a defense mode where you need to defend the truck against a few waves and a boss. Actually, I just call the mini bosses because they're not, they're not really that difficult. So yeah, once you take care of all the enemies, uh, mission complete and that is the war for fire. The War for Fire took me 13 minutes and 57 seconds to complete, which is actually kind of longer than Frontier Defense. Alright, now we're gonna take a look at Steel Cradle. Now we got two more raids left, Steel Cradle and Chase. Now I saved these two for last because there are ways you can cheese these raids to complete them a lot faster. Now Steel Cradle, I'm first gonna explain it with this uh, low bar score build that I have provided to you guys. 
uh, which is quite difficult. I'm not gonna lie. We filled two of the three tasks we needed to do, which meant the uh, Leviathan had a lot more health in the end, just because um, the team didn't really know what to do and they weren't, our builds weren't eff effective as well. It took so much time to shoot the things we needed to shoot. But anyways, <coughs> here we go. So for Steel Cradle, it's actually kind of fun if you have a good team. Um, when you spawn, there are three objectives on the map you need to... When you spawn, there are three objectives on the map you need to do. If you complete them successfully, the Leviathan in the end that you will need to face has a lot less health. Um, these objectives spawn random. They don't have a particular order that they spawn. So you might have the one with the mini boss where you need to destroy the turret first. Or you might have the one with four machine gun turrets first. So, you know, it's random. But anyways, I'm just going to explain each one of them. So one of the objectives that you can complete is you need to kill a few boss and a little mini boss. Once you kill the mini boss, he will drop some explosives that will help you with destroying the tower. But while all this is happening, some of your teammates should be shooting the tower because the explosive will not be enough to destroy the tower. I believe you have 3 minutes to complete each objective, so don't try to waste any time. The second type of objective is quite annoying. There's 4 machine gun turrets which have a ton of health and the pump jack itself which also has a ton of health. If you destroy the machine gun turrets, the uh, the tower, the main tower will lose some health, but it takes so long it's almost impossible to complete it. So this is one of the ones I failed with this build. Uh, I usually just harvest it, which is a lot easier, but since I wanted to do a low par score build for beginners, I wasn't able to do that. So um, you're most likely not going to complete this unless you have a lot of strong teammates to shoot the tower and the machine gun turrets. But, you know, it's just really difficult with this build. You also have some bots to deal with, so which makes it also a lot more difficult. But yeah, if you do complete this objective, you will reduce the Leviathan's health um, by a third. And the last type of objective is just uh, facing a lot of bots, shooting them and collecting some explosives to place under the tower to deal a lot of damage to it. This one is the easiest objective because the explosives help a lot, but you still need to shoot it a little bit with your team to be able to take it down completely. Once you've completed all three objectives, the Leviathan will then be released from its cage and then start attacking you. Now the reason I have a wedge for this build is because I like to wedge under him and that way he can't really shoot them. He will drop his turrets, but hopefully your team is smart enough to take care of that and, you know, take care of the Leviathan. I've heard that on the map factory, you can bring him into the asset and that will destroy him. Personally, I've not done that yet. But if you are using this build, try to wedge him to a corner or something. Or try to hide behind train cards or anything because he deals a lot of damage. But if you're able to pin him with the wedge, uh, you guys can just complete it uh, very easy. Because that's what I did. And once you guys have killed the Leviathan, that's Steel Cradle. You guys have completed Steel Cradle hard mode because this build is not really effective against uh, this type of raid steel cradle with this build with the boss almost having full health <laughs> took me 17 minutes and 26 seconds now for this part of the video i will no longer be using the low parts core build i'm just gonna show you guys how to complete steel cradle and chase the most effective ways now i got invited by a few players Sius, youtube pad wars and forever to help them out in seal cradle and i couldn't believe my eyes what they were doing so i thought i would include this in the footage as well i'm just gonna play the whole footage so you guys can see how fast they complete steel cradle
all right guys there you have it i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope this video helped you out i'm not gonna do a long outro um just glad you made it to the end and i'll see you guys in the next one have a great weekend peace out oh yeah you gotta get swifty you gotta get swifty in here it's time to get swifty oh oh you gotta get swifty oh yeah take off your pants and your panties shit on the floor